I'm waiting for my flight here in Sydney Airport. Um, flying to Darwin, going to economy. Might need some counselling. Um, it's a bit noisy in here. It's um, the Roma Cafe, and you can get that with Priority Pass. I might do a, a, a review on Priority Pass to let you know how you can um, eat for free when you're flying economy which I am today, as I said, I'm still getting over it, but um, anyway, I'm getting a um, Qantas flight to Darwin and uh, I'll let you know what that's like when I'm on the flight. And I thought I'd do my review while I'm sitting in the cafe, because when I'm eating and drinking, I don't have to have a mask on. Right now, and we can't in there. So I have to And today I'll be taking a Qantas flight from Sydney to Darwin. And as for the Novotel here in Darwin, well, looks quite posh, but I must say, <laughs> nothing about this hotel impressed me. Anyway, moving on. And while you're in Darwin, I tell you to check out the Darwin Street Art and the app that goes along with it you will also see moving pictures. If you want to see the whole review of this street art in Darwin, I will leave the link in the description below. Well, the morning pickup was at the Double Tree here in Darwin, and uh, they picked us up at eight o'clock, or at least that was the time. Uh, but it took us a little, little longer to get together and uh, actually on the bus. But the staff did a great job. So I'm now at the Hilton Double Tree, and this is where we get picked up to get on the bus to get to the train station to get on the gang. Uh, I was booked at another hotel and I was being picked up by there, but then they changed their hotels. So that's the first thing I wasn't happy about that messed me up a bit. It's only a hundred meters up the road, but it meant that I had to have breakfast there and then walk up here. Although I could have had breakfast here. Anyway, it's all a bit messy and um, I like to be relaxed, but I'm relaxed now. So I'm here and they've booked me in and they're booking everyone else in so it's a bit of a time wait for that to happen and um, the bus is behind me and everyone will um, hop on the bus and it's about 15-20 minutes to the um, train station to get on the GAN so when we get there I'll talk to you and um, tell you what happens next. Well of course all the bags have to go in the bus as we're all going to the train station and uh, the staff do a great job especially these uh, two fellows loading the bags from inside from uh, inside to outside i've watched them i've stood here and watched them this guy's sweating like a pig but um it all gets done you don't have to do a thing and soon we'll be on that bus on the way 
to the train station to get on the GAN. So we arrived here at the train station and that there you can see our big luggage, um, they're, they're all going in a certain carriage uh, for people to collect when they get off the train because you can only take minimum bag on the carriage. And of course it's photo time. Everybody wants a photo of the loco at the front of the train and I don't blame them because so do I. And here we all are now before um, we actually board the train. Uh, we get a little bit of a chance to get some, some photos. And we've got a great day, great weather. And for some, it's a pretty long walk to their carriage. See, all the people earlier were, um, had to go and grab their luggage and it was all everywhere. Well, I went and um, took some photos of the loco and getting my luggage and see what happens. If you have a look. All my luggage is all put together and waiting for me. <laughs> so I didn't have to scramble. All done. And there, over here, there's the uh, luggage going on that's going to be all stored. That's all the stored luggage that they won't see again. There it goes. Very good. Welcome to Darwin and we look forward to having you on the GAN. Welcome to the GAN. <laughs> Hi once again, I'm Travel Bug Sue and uh, thank you for travelling with me this time on the GAN all the way from Darwin to Adelaide. Past the bridge, you'll be able to see Darwin in the distance from the right hand side of the train. And so we left Darwin Station around 10 a.m. Uh, and we will get into Catherine around uh, 2 p.m. So we'll have lunch on the train and I'll tell you more when we get to that. So I am on a solo cabin here and as you can see I've got a great big window, uh, a little bench, uh, a lounge, you get your amenities there, you get towels, a lot of space, a lot of light and um, storage, there's your towels in the cabinet there in the cupboard, uh, you've got a bin for any rubbish. You've got drawer space for anything you want to put in there and of course you've got your own sink and tap and mirror and rail and all my crap there. Anyway, 
Uh, you actually get your own bathroom if you're on a solo, which are whew, quite big. Well, there was a, quite a few of us, but we had two bathrooms. And of course, uh, the Gans looking after you there with water and sunscreen. And at the end of every carriage, there is a little coffee station. So you can, um, if you want to get up in the middle of the night and uh, grab yourself a cup of tea, you're welcome. And I was uh, lucky enough to get a bit of a glimpse into the twin cabin, which of course I'm on my own, I wouldn't get one of those. Um, and they, they're a double bunk and plenty of storage and light as mine, um, very lit up there. Uh, you've got all, uh, there's the bathroom, you've got an ensuite. So there's the bathroom, everything uh, there with storage in that, that cabinet there, you can see. There's your shower. A toilet, your vanity, and again you get shower uh, uh, amenities and everything you need, towels, all the rest. So yeah, enough room in there I think. It's only for two people, that's all you need. And a lot of other storage space as well uh, in the middle of the cabin there with all your um, uh, power to charge everything you need phones and whatnot and also a little safe down there down the bottom there's a safe and storage up the top as I had but obviously not as much so um, a mirror if you want to look at yourself I don't want to do that really anyway there we have it that's the uh, the twin cat oh and there's the bin in there everyone's got a bin we must be people full of rubbish uh, but all keeps it neat and tidy. There's your power points there. And I think there's more down the bottom next to the bed. Yes, more power down there. So plenty of um, power circuits. And that's the uh, twin cabin. Friendly staff here on the gang. How are you doing? Good, thanks. <laughs> So when we dine, we go to the Queen Adelaide restaurant and as you can see, it's a la carte, great service, great menus and, well, great food. So, let me see, it's 20 past one and um, we just had our first lunch in the dining room and uh, I'll show you the menu uh, uh, after here and it was fantastic uh, just relaxing great service and that was at 11 30 so we got on the train at 10 o'clock in Darwin and we had our lunch at 11 30 and we will we will arrive in Catherine at about apparently at about two o'clock so um and this is mainly for people wanting to know uh what happens in the gar uh as time goes by not so much this is the trip and this is the the view but what actually happens what time you have lunch what time you have dinner what happens here what happens there so i'll give you as much information as i can and uh, hopefully that'll help you and make you want to book and go on the game. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna um, relax. And then when we uh, arrive in Catherine, uh, I've got a tour. I'm gonna go on the gorge on a boat. Uh, we're gonna do two gorges and there are um, different tours to choose from. When you uh, arrive in your cabin, you'll find this on your your uh, little table and it has all the tours on there 
and I'll also have them in the description at the bottom of this video and it will tell you uh, what, what's on offer. So they want you to know which one you want to choose when you get on um, in the afternoon after you settle down they'll come and ask you uh, which tour would you like. So if you're booking and you think you have to book these things before you don't, I've booked the uh, flight which is an an extra and I did book that before I booked uh, before I came on the GAN I, I did it earlier I did it weeks before so um, but otherwise these are here uh, you put this make up my room on your door when you go for breakfast and when you go for dinner so they can um, undo your bed after breakfast and put it back to a lounge and at dinner time they will take away your lounge and turn it into a bed for you to sleep in so that goes on the door uh, what else do you get <laughs> COVID um, all the information about how to stay safe and clean and everything else distance and everything for COVID uh, there's a little thing on Kubipedi here. I'll put all this in the in the description, all these in the description, and a little booklet. Um, and this has got the history of the garn on it, which is fantastic. And I love keeping little things like this when I do tours and go on something really special like the GAN. the individual tours are waiting out the front and they have an A-frame with the name of the tour obviously on the A-frame and so it's all very simple even for people like me see simple there they are lining up and they're getting on their individual uh, tours So yes, we've arrived in Catherine and today I chose the Mit Miluk uh, Gorge Cruise down Catherine River and as you can see again all very organised. They offered us uh, juice and water and fruit before we got on the boat and these two of the boats, uh, or three actually, uh, that are going to take us down the gorge. And this will take us about three hours with some very funny young men. Yeah. So, exit points. On the left and right, if you're jumping over the front, these guys are going to have brakes. If you're jumping over the back, because they're too skinny propellers. If you're looking for life jackets, I'm going to the front left and right, rather than the life jackets, there's something on the back here as well. I'm going to do a little life jackets. There's cool water in the back as well, and a blue cooler. Nice, nice and cold. Well, Nip Me Lunk means place of cicada. And you can certainly hear the cicadas as we go along the river here. And here is what I was hoping to see. Yep, some crocodiles. And these are the smaller fresh water crocs and there'll be a lot more of them to see shortly. You know, these guys' uh, lifespan, they can live up to about 70 years old. And the speed of them, well, they can go up to nearly 30 k's an hour. Um, 
in short bursts, of course. And the male can get up to a thousand Ks, um, kilograms, I mean, and the female a hundred kilograms. So the females are very much smaller than the males. So Nipmuloch National Park it basically <clears throat> is a, um, a deep gorge carved through ancient sandstone by the Catherine River and uh, it draws thousands of people every year. I'm lucky to be one of those today along with these people that I'm with. Um, and in case you're wondering, I thought you might ask, the, uh, the park's main entrance is located 30 kilometres northeast of Catherine and that's via a sealed road. I wonder if these guys here are part of the tour, like it was all planned. I'm not sure. They look pretty natural though. They don't look local, but they look natural. Anyway, getting back to the um, uh, the, the road, yeah, sealed road, and uh, of course it's closed in certain times of the year because uh, of flooding. And uh, coming up are, I think, a few more of my little favourite friends. I love photographing animals. And there they are. They camouflage very well, unlike probably myself if I laid on a rock there. Uh, anyway, people take boat tours through here like we are and uh, a few little helicopters you can hear above. And uh, doesn't he look beautiful? I get very sidetracked by these um, these crocodiles. So cute. So with this tour that I'm on, that I chose, um, we actually go through two gorges, and uh, this is the Nitmaluk Gorge cruise. It's one of the first things you see on the uh, day tours and uh, we've had a bit of a walk so we get off and we do a bit of a walk and you can see there the uh, the Aboriginal artwork on the rocks and we'll have a bit of a walk and uh, get a good views at the end of here. There we are getting off the boat and um, we'll come back and we'll get on the boat again and we'll go through another gorge. But uh, definitely a great tour, and today we're lucky enough to have a great day. Now I've given you a little bit of information on this tour but uh, I'm nowhere as good as the gentleman that drove the boat and took us through the gorges explaining everything about their world and um, the area, the surrounding area. They were funny, knowledgeable and uh, well you've just got to give it a go. Book this tour and um, see for yourself. Today we arrive into Alice Springs and I will show you in the description below there are all the tours you can take while in Alice Springs. But for me today, I think I'm about to have the ride of my life. And they're taking the buggy. Give us a wave. Thank you.
So you find that uh, both these planes serve double planes, so they're pretty quiet, but if you want to, just roll it up in your fingers, stick it in your ears, yeah? There'll also be these things. These things are totally useless because they're made out of paper. However, inside it is a plastic bag. So, should anything come up in flight, please use the plastic bag. It belongs to you. I don't want it. Nobody wants it. You can take it home as a souvenir afterwards, okay? Along the way, uh, taking pictures, bringing your mother at home, it's fine. It won't interfere with our sensitive navigation equipment. <coughs> we'll point out uh, most of these highlights on the way down anyway uh, for you. And uh, it should be smooth enough. Uh, so the captain will tell you you can unbuckle, come up the front, take pictures if you want to. We'll pass your cameras up and we'll take a picture out the front if you want to. It's mushy a pilot. There you go. Alright, um, would anyone like photos in front of the aircraft before? Yes, please. We, um, board? Yeah. So we're about to board our little plane, our Cessna, and it will take us all the way to Uluru. Here you can see parked at the airport uh, a lot of the planes that are um, obviously not in use because of the COVID. And this guy, um, I thought you flew a plane, not pushed it, but well, I guess we're going to get there quicker than them if we fly. I'm not sure. Looks hard work though. So we're about to take off. I love taking off and landing. I just love it. And I love flying. I love the whole bit. And this was just sensational. There were 11 of us. There were six of us in one plane and five of us in the other plane. And uh, we, we never saw the other plane in the air, although the pilot did. But none of us could see it. Maybe he's got pilot eyes. Maybe you need pilot eyes to see those sorts of things. But um, sit back and just enjoy, relax, and take in what we saw from the sky, a sensational trip. And the pilot, well, he was wonderful. Not only was he a good driver, smooth rider, he, uh, he had a little board, like an ex etza sketch if you used to have those, if you know of those, and he wrote little things on it as in, as in uh, where we were or where, where we were going. And all these things you see here, we saw from the sky. And anything we didn't know, he explained to us and told us exactly what they were. And he also took photos for us, if we wanted, from his window at the front. And approximately 2,000 Americans live in Alice Springs and work at Pine Gap. All up this uh, flight was about an hour and a half and here you can see we're getting closer here's the Olgas well what we know is the Olgas Mount Olga and um, we're very very close so it's about an hour and a half to get there because they do a bit of a circle around the Olgas and of Uluru and then we land in Uluru and uh, on the way back we don't do that of course so it's about an hour on the way back and there's the rock
and I don't think there's a better way to get an absolute spectacular shot of Ayers Rock than in this sort of tour from an aeroplane and uh, I, who's driving that? Wow! <laughs> Clever pilot, can't even see him. <laughs> and we're landing again, like I said, I love landing. And it was a smooth land. And we're nearly down. So we're down on the ground and I see that Jetstar has made it also and so it's our partner plane landing just before us. We've just made it to Uluru on this little plane. It's our pilot. I watched him reading the manual on the way and he reads really fast because he landed the thing. And we're here and we're safe. I don't know about getting back, but we're here and I'm going to show you around the big rock of ours. See you soon. And it was SEIT, that was the tour company that took us around the rock. Dan and Wayne came fantastic tour guides and you're about to see a, just a little bit of our wonderful day here at Uluru. Either side of the road here, that's called the Honey Gravillia. There's some around the uh, area where we're going to go for lunch so you can get a bit of a, a closer look at some of them if you like as well. Make some lovely photos. <laughs> So we've come out here on our um, scenic flight and SEIT are the company that brought us out here. It was Dan and Wayne. Hello. He's behind. He's doing this filming for me. And we had a great lunch. It's all prepared. All, everything's so organised. So I suggest if you want to take this uh, scenic flight and you don't know whether you should or not, I'll give it a thumbs up. These guys are fantastic and we've just had our lunch right near the rock and there's no people anywhere to be seen but us. So we're the only ones here and then now they're going to take us closer to the rock and I'll show you that when I get there. We've arrived here at the bottom of the rock and um, I've just found this seat and I think I'd love to take it home but no that's not going to happen. Anyway what I'm here for, Dan and Wayne are now going to take us in the cave and teach us all about the Aboriginal art or the Aboriginal paintings. So we'll go in there and we'll see you in there. So 
So this is a stunning Morty Jalu cave that has, well, stories, ancient, ancient stories. And these guys were great at telling those. And you can see the wonderful artwork and the colors in the stone. So water is life in the desert, you need to know where it is and you need to keep it clean, not just for yourself but for the animals as well. If, you, if animals suffer then so do the people who <coughs> depend on them. And you can see here the uh, natural shape that the rock has taken on through weather over the years and uh, I must say I never thought it would actually look like this close up and um, feel the way it does when I'm, when I'm here. Live. Yeah, so we're here at the bottom of um, Wallaroo where, where people used to walk up and you can probably barely just see, but I'll have photos later on, um, where the chains were uh, that people held on to. Uh, reminds me, I have never um, climbed this, but I've climbed Sigrio rock in um, Sri Lanka and it reminds me a little bit of that, the steepness. Um, there it is. And what year was it closed? Uh, 2019. 2019. Oh, not that long ago. Not that long ago. So they got it back, the Aborigines got it back, and no longer can we walk our beautiful rock, but we can see it. And we're here now, and um, uh, we're just about to get back on our little flight to go back. But this is uh, part of that tour as well. Yes, there's lots of flies here, <laughs> but um, <laughs> we're lucky enough to have good weather. Not too. To be much. honest, she has no much. idea what it's like. It, the summer is just horrendous. <laughs> This, you I got it good, girl. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a cut. Yeah, that's it. So it's time now to leave this wonderful place. We've had a spectacular day, and our very professional pilot is going to take us back to the airport. And I believe this time our plane's taking off first, and there's also lots of other things to see on this uh, tarmac when you're out here, it's quite amazing and it's sensational when it's so close. So here we are, take off, I think I've told you before, love the take off and the landing and the flying, sensational, I just love it. And there's a great aerial view of what we have just left and uh, I'll always remember great day and just take a while to have a look at uh, a few more shots from the air and again like I said there's nothing like photography from this point.
We've got some drinks on the corner here, and then if you make go around to the left, you've got the historic home set to have a look through, and then the table's around the side to kind of grab yourself a seat. <laughs> Suddenly appeared before me The only one that I could ever know I heard someone whisper please There's this blogger out of it. <laughs> I know Hi. I'd love to take that, go. but it's not oh, red. This. Posh. Very posh. Thank you. You're welcome. So, whichever day tour you pick here in Alice Springs, you will all end up uh, together for an outback barbecue dinner at the Alice Springs Telegraph Station and I can tell you we had a fantastic night as you can see the wines flowing and the tables are set and everything is organized you can ride camels you can um, warm up there near the fire although we had a pretty uh, pretty good weather for our dinner but yep it does get a bit colder during the night and um, there's a little surprise for you later on and I'm not going to tell you in case you book this tour. And the camel ride is uh, just one of the things you can choose to do on this night in the Telegraph Station. And of course, there's also live music. I'm going to go enjoy it. Um, 
a cheers to COVID travel in Australia. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. cheers! Cheers! COVID travel in Australia. Cheers! cheers. <laughs> Have you got a willy, Glenn? Stay. But I got to have some fun. 
Well, it's been a big night and, gee, oh, I'm tired. There's lots of wine, lots of food and singing and uh, uh, my room somewhere here. Shit, they all look the same. Oh, no. I hope I don't get... Oh, is any... Oh, she's not there. And, um... Oh, I think I've got further to go. Oh, no. Wait on. I could make myself a cup of coffee. 24 hours you can make yourself a cup of coffee or someone's had a wine there. Anyway, I'll try again. I'm sure it's here. There's a carpet's all the same and the doors are all the same. I haven't got my name on the door, but I'm sure it's here. Oh, wait on. It's up. Oh, shit, it's a long way. Uh, wait on. Oh. I've had it. Good night. Well, after a good night's sleep, we're all up and ready to go again, and today we're going to venture into Cooper Peavy. him along like because he's got his own chocolate. But all the buses are lined up. And we're going to keep the Peggy Mines today. So it's very organised. They've got their own buses, very posh. And the staff. And the staff are good. They're all very good. They're still coming we're off the train, as you see. There's the train, goes forever. And we're in the middle of nowhere, feels like it. Anyway, we're gonna get on the bus and um, we'll go to the mine. dirt roads they are extremely dusty dust can and we will get into the cabin we take every measure to minimize dust intrusion now we're not going to have a dust cloud but there'll be a little bit that gets in so the air conditioner helps keep the cabin pressurized
Approximately 150 million years ago, the ocean covered the Kuvipedi region. As the seawater receded, climatic changes caused the lowering of the underground water tables. Silica solutions were carried down to deposit in cavities, vaults and fractures in the ground and now, millions of years later, these silica solutions have formed into opal. To the conveyor belt where a gentleman or a lady sitting in the little darkened room under a UV light will examine each piece of rock. Uh, the UV light will show the opal and you remove it off the conveyor belt. That is the new modern way of collecting the ore from your shaft today. Cooper was originally known as the Stewart Range Opal Field. But in 1920, a name was needed so a post office could be established. At a progress committee meeting, the opal miners chose Kubipedi, an Aboriginal term meaning white man in whole. I think I might have seen one of those in Alice Springs, or well, yeah, it could have been the wine. In June 1975, the Kuperpiti Aboriginal community adopted the name Yamuna, meaning long life, and the name also used for the Amuna or the Mulga tree that you commonly see in this area. It's believed that the soldiers who returned from the trenches of France during the First World War introduced the idea of living underground in homes, commonly known as dugouts. And here you see exactly what it's like to live underground. It's estimated that about 50% of the population live underground now. Most dugout homes are excavated into hillsides rather than dug from shafts. The soil in the Kubipedi hillside is stable enough to allow huge ceiling spans in rooms and it is not unusual for a family to buy an adjoining property and tunnel the link to two dwellings, or even three or four. Some mansion style homes spread up to 450 square metres underground. Together with nearby Andamuka and Mintabi, Kubipedi produces 85% of the world's opal supply. So aren't we lucky? You don't smoke, for God's sake, right? And and do a lot of other things that you shouldn't do with explosive. Never forget, keep it in the back of your mind that you've got an explosive you work in. Now. And now, we're all about to experience an underground lunch. Woohoo! How exciting. <sighs> At least under here. It's cool. <laughs> Here you go.
The District Council of Kubipedi estimates that the population of Kubipedi is around two and a half thousand. Now approximately 60% of these people have European heritage. And here we got to visit the Serbian Orthodox Church. So here we are, we're off to the breakaways now and I can tell you the colours were just spectacular. Look at that, wonderful. And uh, here we are in our bus, oh no wait on, that's not our bus, no, no, oh yes, there's our bus, same same but different. So behind me are the um, plains of Kubipedi and um, that's where Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, was uh, filmed right behind me. Those um, planes behind me there. And um, around this side is the longest fence in the world. It's built for the dingoes. So they wouldn't eat the lamb. Um, if I was a dingo, I'd eat lamb. I love it. It's too expensive now. Anyway, not a dingo. but. Uh, Longest fence in the world is the dingo fence here in the plains of Cuba Pedi. And there's, yes, there's flies around me again. I don't know if they follow me or if they're, they're just here. Anyway, another stop on our little tour. There's our bus behind me, not Priscilla. It's got no silver uh, business on the top, but certainly um, a lot of land out here pretty much untouched. I was thinking of getting on top of the bus and driving in that direction and singing Shake Your Groove thing, but I might fall off, so maybe no. And I'm Travel Bug Sue, and wherever you go in the world, I'm bound to be there. And these behind me are the breakaways that we drove past. Yes, still flies. Um, and I'll add that um, since we left this morning, I don't think I've sneezed <laughs> this much in my entire life. It's like I've got um, hay fever. I'm um, not an asthmatic, but um, I'd hate to be one with this dust. They say it's not bad for your lungs, but um, we'll see. <laughs> but I've just been blowing my nose and sneezing the whole day. Just a bit of info if you're uh, maybe an asthmatic and you're coming out here. But there are the breakaways behind me. The flies are following me. And um, again, that's where Priscilla was um, recorded behind me. I'm going to have a wine. This is a little treat they gave us in the middle of nowhere in Kubipedi. Have a wine on the um on the gan we're not on the gan but we're getting back on the gan shortly and here you're going to get a glimpse of the wonderful landscape of the beautiful country that all these people on this train are lucky enough to live in
So as I said, they, um, they've just set up the bar here in the middle of nowhere. Why not? I say. There's nothing wrong with having a drink with a thousand flies in the middle of nowhere, even when they go up your nose. So I'm going to relax, I'm going to get off the video and um, have a wine. That's a good idea, mate. Go on. Dex, hold the wine and hold my camera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Still like it. Phantom. Phantom <laughs> Here in the outback, here in the outback, anything can happen. There's lizards, there's geckos, there's, oh shish, there's women. Shall I move the glass? Stop the fuel. No, she wants it. Go. Reach and reach. And she's got it. Oh, but ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Yes. <laughs> She'd walk a million miles for that. <laughs> in the heat with flies in her mouth. <laughs> And there's the last of us to leave. <laughs> I think they've had a good time. I think they're from that other bus. <laughs> Jocelyn, how are you? Have you been? What have you been doing today? Have you been busy? Been flat out, mate. Like a lizard drinking. Oh, no <laughs> doubt. I think we've got the proof. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, as we approach, uh, ready for disembarkation. Just like to say uh, thank you very much for uh, coming and visiting us here in the remote outback of South Australia. Uh, on behalf of the Cooper PD team at Journey Beyond, we hope that you have enjoyed your uh, discovery of Cooper PD and the uh, surrounding areas today. Uh, we also hope that uh, the remainder of your journey on the train and uh, when you do head home is a safe one. Thanks again. Enjoy the rest of this amazing journey of discovery on the GAM. Well, our GAN journey from Darwin all the way to Adelaide has taken us three days and, um, well, three nights rather, and four days. This train spans about a kilometre long and has uh, 36 carriages as well as two locomotives. It uses 40,000 litres of diesel on this trip and as well 3,000 litres of water for each carriage. There's 36 carriages, and that includes guest carriages, crew quarters, uh, the Platinum Club, and the Queen Adelaide Restaurant. Um, and there's not just one restaurant, of course, there's uh, a restaurant for each, um, not individual, I think quite a few carriages hold one bar and one restaurant and a kitchen. So it's quite a big, um, a big train, uh, you don't get to see all the carriages. Of course, it's a long walk through all these carriages, but of course you get to meet all the people on all the different carriages, and we've had a great time. You can see here, um, as the sun goes down, we'll sit and chat again with more wine. Oh, imagine that, more wine. Uh, a few canapes. And um, when we choose to, we can go back on the train and we'll have dinner on the train tonight, today. Uh, if this is our last night until we head into Adelaide tomorrow morning. Cheers.
watch the back. Yeah. Yeah, okay, it's all right. That's the worst thing that happens in your life that you get a state to. <laughs> Well, I must give a big thank you to the staff and management of the GAN. They were fantastic and always at our beck and call with a smile on their face. I give it a thumbs up. And I'm just wondering, I wonder what everyone else thought. Thumbs up for the GAN. And thumbs up for me too. <laughs> thumbs up for the GAN. Thumbs up for the GAN. Thumbs up for the GAN. Travel again. <laughs> if you're looking for a good trip, go to the GAN. Woo! And what we really want to know is it the GAN or the GAN? Depends what side of the bridge you come from, I guess. Is it the GAN or the GAN? GAN. It's the GAN. Why is it the GAN? Because it's Afghanistan. For you at home, Afghanistan. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. We've had a lot of wine on this trip and I think it's coming to me. <laughs> You've been travelling with the GAN. Beautiful. She's calling me.